friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you are back. Thank you so so much for clicking on my video today. If you are new, hi, my name's Rabbit and my pronouns are they them and if you're back, welcome back. So today's video, I gave a sneak peek of it in one of my earlier videos, but it's gonna be all about how to make a collage box. So this is the one that I'm gonna show you guys how to make in this specific tutorial, but since the technique is pretty basic and you kind of just need to see it once to then apply it to other ones, I figured I'd, while I was here, show you the rest of my collection of the ones that I've made over time. I also have some pictures of ones that I've like given away as gifts, but before I gave them away I had uh, pictures of them, so I'll include those as well. But if you're interested in how to make something like this out of just, I used a cardboard tea box for this one, then please keep on watching. And if you don't really care about the DIY aspect and just want to see the collection, then I'll have the timestamp so you can skip around to that part as well. So on we go to the tutorial. So first I want to talk about gathering materials because I am one of those people that tends to like not really throw things out that are like kind of fun, exciting, shiny things because there's always the possible future purpose of using them in a project like this. So I just wanted to talk about some of the things one could use. And the short answer of it is pretty much anything flat or even non-flat things if you're using hot glue. But the longer answer is I like to use postcards packaging, advertisements, pages of zines or books that are falling apart, different packing materials if they have a nice color, old advertisements for like music festivals or magazine pages are always an obvious classic, packaging for medications or teas or uh, foreign currency if it happens to be pretty or have a nice sort of design on it, anything shiny and a lot of times incense packaging I tend to save since it tends to be pretty and also has the bonus effect of making the whole box smell really good. I use a lot of cutouts for murky magazines and different like promotional flyers that you can find in stores and labels that I can take off food like jam jars, old photos that I find around, and you get the idea now. It's tarot cards, postage stamps, whatever you can find that has a nice design that you might want to repurpose. Uh, just use your imagination, run wild. Uh, doilies, paper doilies are really really great. So. If you don't already and you're a crafty person, I would recommend having like a little drawer or a box set aside so you can collect all the exciting things for future projects. Now, if that sounds horrible and you don't want to do any of that, that's fine. I used to really love Rookie Magazine collage kits. Um, this is some examples of some of them. Just go on Google Images or go on Rookie Mag, I'll link it below, and you can look up their collage kits and print them out. So some of my favorite things about the magazines, you could see everyone's different um, pictures every month. Or if you're picky, kind of like me, you can print out photos of different characters you like, um, or actors or famous actresses or movie stills. Just, you know, whatever you like. Get crazy, get creative, and um, now that we've gathered our materials, we can go forth and start the project itself. So the first step that I like to do is go through my pile and pick out all the pictures that I really like and then start cutting them out, usually leaving a little bit of border around the shape is better. I'd recommend highly if your character has curly hair to give them like almost a sticker outline stencil and not try to go too close to it. It also just makes everything faster, but I just go through and cut out all the images and little pictures that I like. If you have something with super fine details or you want to get super up close um, with something, I'd recommend a tiny pair of like nail scissors or sewing scissors. Those have always served me well in the past, but a good pair of like just kitchen scissors that are nice and sharp are my favorite way to go through this. Also, I like using Cage's old flash sheets um, to cut up because he doesn't like to, you know, display them uh, elsewhere and he gave me a lot of them a couple of years ago, so they always end up in collages. Um, so on we go until we have a sizable pile. Obviously, you don't have to put every single thing um, onto your box and you can put as much or as little as you want. Like, you can just put one picture, but for the most part, I like to clutter it up with my usual maximalist stylings. So for me, it's the more the merrier you can do what you like. The next step is going to be to paint um, the box or item that you're going to collage. In this case, I've chosen an old Red Rose tea box because I go through these things like nobody's business and the big boxes make handy holders for things. So I'm taking some dollar store paint and a big flat paintbrush and just going over it super messily. Um, doesn't have to be precise at all since most of it will be covered up. And I'd recommend, depending on your color and your texture and all that, going for at least two layers. And if you're impatient like me, you can blow dry between the layers because you don't want to paint on wet paint. It just makes everything peel up. So go ahead 
get all your layers of color on or if you are just going to overlap every single image don't bother with this but I think some nice uh, designs you can do are like just one solid color um, stripes are also always fun little stars or lines or metallics are cool but I've just got a plain black background for this project and my next step is going to be to play with some of the images that I've picked out to kind of figure out what I would like to do this is a process that I don't like to rush at all I really really take my time and try out a lot of different designs and sometimes I'll like the layout of something but like maybe not for the front so I'll take a mental note of it or take a picture of it if I really want to remember it so I can use it for like maybe the inside or maybe one of the sides or something like that if a certain combination of images is really speaking to me but yeah it's just a matter of playing around with things until you find something you like and once we have an idea of what that might be we can start gluing things down so um, for this project I was trying a new technique which was a glue stick for the first time and I don't recommend this just use liquid glue <laughs> I don't know why I was trying something new for this um, use liquid glue and a paintbrush and I'll show how to do that um, as the project goes on um, but yes once I have my basic idea of the layout sorted I can go ahead and and glue down the pieces and start placing them keeping in mind the layering so anything you put down first is most likely to be covered so if there's any images you really love and want to be front and center uh, make sure you put those on near the end I don't know <laughs> if this is all just like common sense but sometimes you have to like think about these things right but yeah I'm just going ahead and gluing all my little pieces on we're just going a little bit at a time side by side and picking out the design we want to go in obviously if you have a box there's gonna be these seams in the past I've glued it down and then cut it but that kind of leaves some really jaggedy edges so I'd recommend just using your scissors and trimming it before you place everything down but if you want to really avoid any awkward looks uh, don't use stuff like human bodies or animals bodies or stuff like that like more abstract things like plants or smaller pictures of people that don't go over the crease tend to look a little bit more normal but it's fine I didn't really mind for this project I was just going for an experiment another way to figure out where the seams that you need to have will be is to put the picture under the fold and then trace it out with a pencil before cutting it. That way you can get a very exact line of where everything will be. And you don't have to use a paper tea box. I just happened to do that because I had one on hand. Sometimes paint has a hard time sticking to something so smooth. So um, I'd also recommend using stuff like raw wood. Um, like you can get lots of these wood boxes from the dollar store or the thrift store that would be really handy for this kind of project. There's nothing really to this project that needs the in-depth explaining it's really just a matter of going around and picking out different designs of stuff until you get what you're satisfied with so i'll just show as i do that and you know we can see we can see the whole thing come together i ended up going with a lot of my favorite uh, fictional characters for this specific box um it's got the bride of frankenstein it's got lydia dietz it's got uh, dr frankenfurter from rocky horror and the creature from the black lagoon once i have the first layer of pictures kind of sorted i wanted to make sure that everything was nice and sealed down properly so now i'm going ahead with some mod podge but you can use whatever liquid glue you have on hand and a big paintbrush and just going over everything i would recommend not using a super heavy hand with your liquid glue because it can smudge the ink depending on the quality of a uh, printer. In the past I have had things run a little bit if I've used uh, too much Mod Podge or liquid glue but I find this a really helpful step to kind of seal everything in and also make it look more one-dimensional like everything looks smoother and flatter and more like one cohesive piece as opposed to like the edges peeling off and stuff like that even though that will happen over time like I've had some boxes for for over five years at this point and some edges are peeling up and all you have to do is go back in and put a little glue under those edges and glue it back down once the first layer of glue is dried I can go ahead and add more little detail pieces so I have some of the favorite designs laid out on the side and I'm just playing with the order until I have things more covered up this is one of the newer kind of things that I'm doing where I'm not covering every single inch I'm leaving a little bit of black space and I'll fill it in with more just kind of marker strokes and different like little dots and lines and stuff like that so we'll 
we'll see that later. With this project, I didn't have the same amount of pressure I used to have of like, I need to fill every single inch. But yeah, you can do obviously whatever you'd like and just go with your own stylistics as, as you create things. And if you really hate something that you glued on there, just glue something over it. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> That's the good part about these projects. Anyway, now that I figured out that the glue stick wasn't working so well, I'm just going ahead and gluing everything down directly. And as you can see here, I'm going in with a metallic marker and just adding some little details to fill in some of the black empty spaces. You don't have to be an artist or do anything super creative or wild with this. Just some little dots and lines usually suffice. Going ahead, and as you can see, this is how I glue things down. A layer of glue on top and underneath. And then after it's all done and dry, I will put one full full layer over the entire box and all that and then the back where i put elaine from the love witch and morticia adams from the adams family and elvira some of my favorite spooky pop culture ladies and once they're on you can see that i do the layer of mod podge to just make everything nice and sealed in and since this is the back there is no crease um, so i don't have to worry about cutting any of these pictures before gluing them down then just going ahead and adding the finishing touches on the outside before working on the inside and I had really liked this um, Amy Brown fairy kind of design that I had tried on the top with the mountains and the crystals and stuff, so I decided to do it on the inside instead. You obviously don't have to do the inside of the box, but I figured I still had a lot of leftover pieces that I wanted to use up. Um, so I'm going ahead and doing this kind of beautiful, ethereal, pastel-y fairy design situation. I like it a lot. It um, Amy Brown is one of my favorite artists and I always have such a soft spot for fairies and like stripy tights or stripy sleeves with long hair and maybe dragon friends and that kind of thing. It just, yeah, it always does it for me. It's always a design I've liked a lot. So the inside of the box is a little bit more pink and pastel than the outside, which is a little more like red and black. And if you're curious, this is the box that I now keep most of my hair accessories in. But obviously, if you're making one of these for yourself, you can put whatever whatever you'd like in it. <laughs> and once everything is set and sorted, I do my final sealant layer over everything and maybe one more extra layer after that's dry for good measure. Um, but that's done. The box is finished and now it's time to show you it and the rest. All right, that was how I made this box. And I really, really like it. I think it's got like kind of a spooky, kind of dark magic fairy girl energy with like a lot of my favorite icons from like pop culture and stuff. So just super, super fun all around in my opinion. Um, I'm really happy that I got to include one of Cage's art pieces and Dr. Frankenfurter is just such an icon. So is Lydia, so is the Bride of Frankenstein, so is the Creature from the Black Lagoon. I had to, had to include my my friends and i adore the interior i think this is like so dark magical fairy pastel kind of situation which i absolutely adore the art of amy brown has been a huge inspiration to me ever since i like saw it as a teenager it just it tickles a part of my brain that oh i adore it it, it makes me really really happy so yes that is kind of this one um i didn't do anything in the bottom since i'll probably fill it with stuff and you won't be able to see the bottom much anyway but i like it a lot and um this is kind of one of the more spooky ones that i've made most of my other ones have been much more sort of pastel looking so let's look at those this is a box that i keep all of my extra sewing supplies in so right now it's mostly just got like some thread and needles in there uh, but i made it originally on this purple box that I think someone got at like the dollar store and then painted it purple and then they left it at the thrift store because I guess they didn't like it very much anymore and I just collaged over it and I freaking love this thing I think it looks really really cute a lot of these cutouts are from rookie mag but I also used like some pieces of shiny tape some dried flowers like real flowers not um pictures of them some advertisements of soap that was like really cute and kind of like spunky magazine cutouts uh again this like glitter tape or glitter paper or whatever it is i love kind of holographic -y looking stuff like this and i think it, it looks really cute i like this box a lot and it's peeling a little bit since i've had it for years and years but if this happens you can just glue right back over it and it should be okay so that's one of my boxes another one that i made this is one that i think i made for cage on like one of our anniversaries so it's got a bunch of like personal pictures so that's me and cage me and my boy when we were just little babies oh man this is like 
We look so young in this. That's crazy. Oh my god. Wild. But yes, basically when Cage and I were long distance, we used to write a lot of letters to each other. So I wanted to give him a box to keep all the letters in. So every time I open this up, I get to just like see all of our fun old memories, like the string from when we went apple picking or like little notes that he wrote me or like the swatches of paint that we painted our, our house colors. So that's really cute. This is the interior. You can see, oh, you can see that I use this like letter sending motif um, on the outside and the inside of the box. And yeah, just like a super fun, cute memory box. This one makes me really happy. I've got our anniversary date on there as well. And a sandworm looking guy. And this is washi tape. So yeah, don't be afraid to use tape, to use stickers, to use whatever you have available to you to make your your things all fun and delightful. It makes me really happy and I think if you have like a partner or a best friend that you like share memories with or a parent or whoever, this is like a really cool and personalized gift, if, especially if you include a bunch of like your own photos in it. So that's an idea for y'all. This was back when I was a teenager I made this and now it's like overflowing with stuff. It's another like memory box that's just got all kind of my personal stuff in it. Tickets to medieval fairs. This is a birthday card that my dad made for me when I was turning 23 and it's featuring my cats, which I just think is the cutest thing in the world. Got like my little grad cap thingy from when I graduated and keychains from different trips that I've gone on. Just basically important things have gone in this box and it means a lot to me. It's like overflowing. I need to get a bigger box at some point. Um, but yeah, these are all mostly images from Rookie Mag and Frankie Mag, which is an Australian magazine that I used to adore and be subscribed to that I'm not subscribed to anymore because it was too cost prohibitive with the shipping to Canada, you know, from Australia. Uh, but it's really sweet. I think one of my favorite things about ones like this is the different sizes of stuff. I think it looks really effective when you have like big pieces like this leg, but also like itty bitty little pieces like this paintbrush or like this lip or, you know, this flower. It just kind of adds a lot of texture and dimension and different like fun elements to it. So yeah, super cute. Another memory box of mine. It's like gotten dirty over the years and I don't really know how to clean it, but it's fine. It just adds to the charm. So yes, that is memory box number two, I guess. You can also of course do this on non-box items, whether that's just like a piece of paper or candles that you got from the dollar store. Uh, this was a Christmas gift that I made for Cage. Basically I got devotional, like Christian, you know, those candles that you pray to. God, I'm the, I'm blanking on the name right now. But um, yeah, those like very religious devotional candles. I wanted to make some of them, but with featuring lemon and tuna, and I'm sorry if this is like sacrilege to anyone, uh, but Cage liked it as a Christmas gift. And uh, yeah, I think they're super fun. This one's of tuna, this one's of lemon. And I think this picture is just super fun because she was like wrapped up in a blanket and Cage was like petting her and it just looks, I don't know, she looks like a total saint. So if you wanna like, do a DIY on like candles or a piece of paper or a lamp or a piece of furniture, whatever you want. The world is your oyster. There is no limit. Mod podge it up and put whatever you want on things. It's a lot of fun. You also can do super tiny ones. I used to do a lot of these on like Altoid tin boxes. This one has like some milkshakes and smoothies and stuff and like a black cat and a telephone. And uh, for stuff like this, I remember I would put like a piece of packing tape over it to seal it. So that was like a fun little thing. Uh, this is another box that I DIY. I don't remember what this used to be. It's not really like an Altoid tin box, but it's got kind of that same, um, what you call it, dimension. Uh, for this one, it looks like I glued some velvet down in the bottom of this. I made this back when I was 16. And this was a sticker that a friend of mine gave to me. So I put it inside with like a piece of lace and some glow in the dark stars and like a little piece of like glitter rhinestone at the bottom. And then this is the back. We've got like a little girl whispering to a wolf, a little like Halloween cat pumpkin, Ouija board situation. I also drew on it with just like marker and then metallic markers on the back, this like drippy thing and this goddess symbol. This is like a 3D pony sticker that I got at the dollar store. And this I think I got at a rookie mag. And yeah, it's kind of falling apart a little bit, but it's a cute little box. I don't have anything in it right now and I don't remember what I used to use it for, but yeah, my little teenager box. This is another one that I made when I was a teenager and it's super cute. Look at this little bat with like a wizard hat on. That's so fun. It's got this little like good luck moth or butterfly. Oh, it's like a horseshoe and then I put a moth under it, but it kind of looks like it's part of one thing. 
Uh, it's got mushroom. It's got like a mushroom house and a locket. Uh, this is more of those soaps that I like cut out the advertisement for. Got like tickets on the side. I think this is a fake ticket. I don't think this is from anything I went to. Um, I think I got it in a rookie collage. And then this is the inside. Kind of depends whether I do the inside or not, because sometimes it's annoying because there are a lot more curvatures and stuff. Uh, but with these little coffin boxes, I found them at the dollar store around Halloween. And then I got a handful more of them, and I have used them to collage all over and then give to Cage's mom and sister as gifts. So I'll insert some pictures, if I remember to, of those ones, because I think they're really cute. And like, coffin boxes are fantastic, and they're extra cute when you do like a little collage thing on them, in my opinion. Then, um, if you've been following me for like, a year or more, maybe you saw this the first time I posted it. Um, it's not really a collage box in the classic way, but if you want to do like a more subtle look, you don't have to go all over collage. You can do something like, like just put one picture in each thing. I have a full tutorial on how I made this and it's a little bit falling apart since then, but it's a cute jewelry box. It was just from a brown jewelry box that I found at the thrift store as usual and then added some spooky icons too. And then this one I didn't make. Um, so do not give me credit for it, but I did find it at the thrift store and I love it. I think it's super pretty and I think someone made it out of an old cigar box. I'm also not sure if they designed this and then printed it and cut it out or if the tattoos on this are like collaged on, but I adore this box. And yeah, I just found it at the thrift store for like $6, weirdly at the Christian thrift store. It says big girls in little clothes. It's got this kind of statue with tattoos on it and a cigarette and all sorts of fun edgy stuff on it. They painted the sides black. Um, so yeah, if you don't want to do the all over super messy maximalist collage like this, you can totally do something real simple like this and I think it would be the, the same process more or less. Um, so yeah, and in this one I just keep all my all my bracelets and bangles and things. Yeah, I, that looks like a cigar label. I'm, I, I don't smoke cigars so I wouldn't know, but I believe this is a cigar box and cigar boxes I think make great collage bases. So I hope that brought you a little bit of inspiration. I hope you um, make all sorts of exciting designs. I will link Rookie Mag below. As I said, their collage kits are absolutely incredible. I've made so many of these pieces with their collage kits and it's really fun to just look at their collage kits, like the ones people have completed in different ways than you because you can be like, oh, we all used the same couple of pieces, but we all came out with vastly different final designs and it just uh, makes me so happy. Every time I look around my room, I have all these Rookie Mag pages just pasted up everywhere and I am so sad every time I think about the fact that that magazine is over because it meant so much to me as a teenager and really inspired me creatively in so many ways. So I'd highly recommend giving that a look. I've also been thinking of Mookie Chick for a while now recently, which was another one that uh, meant a lot to me. I think that one's still up and running and you can still find lots of their DIYs, but I really miss the internet early days of like tons of blogs with cool sewing tutorials and I hope that this tutorial was helpful in some way or the collection was interesting to see at least. Good luck with all your future productions if you end up making anything. Um, I hope it goes well and I believe in you. All right, um, give yourself a big hug for me and I hope you're having a fantastic day or night or whenever it happens to be that you are watching. And that's all I got for today. Bye for now.